in official scholarship programs like the Fulbright, but the overwhelming majority are in fact um, uh, sometimes private scholarships, sometimes they find their own way to the U.S. Um, but there's a lot of ways. I mean, the students are one way to interact uh, as citizens, as tourists, as business people, as cultural exchanges in all kinds of ways. But, uh, you know, 50,000 uh, visas, that's about approximately one in every 50. If you do the mathematics, approximately one out of every 50 uh, Mongolians have, have had a chance to interact. And I think oftentimes those interactions, uh, you know, lead to positive things. As you yourself, you studied in the United States, um, I think increasingly uh, Mongolians are having opportunities like that. Yes, we are very fortunate to have an uh, internationally qualified education from the U.S. institutions. And many yes, young children study now in the schools with their parents. And these 50,000 people are potentially people who have seen the country, who, mm -hmm. have, who have brought the value, I think, of social uh, living and the, the, the way how the modern world lives. But still there are people who is not coming on necessarily on time. Mm -hmm and the staying there, they are part of also people who are staying from other countries, staying in the country. Uh, in that sense, there was a certain thing in recently in uh, Arizona. Mm -hmm. There was a, a law that, that the, for, uh, in the U.S., uh, by law, uh, police, by any reason, if you stop there, if they stop by any reason, you, they have no authority to have checked whether mm -hmm. you are, mm -hmm. your visa expired or not. But in Arizona, they changed the law. Now they do. What do you think about that? Well, the, you know, we're a country of immigration. We've had people come from all over the world. Um, I think the fact of the matter is that uh, you know, any community, when um, the numbers become really large, there become issues, and it has to be worked out. I think in our system, of course, it's a system of laws that's worked out in that fashion. Uh, there's been challenges to that law as well. I, to be honest, don't know how it will come out in the end, um, but certainly will respect the, the legal system. Um, I think the fact of the matter is that in terms of legal immigration, though, we are absolutely a country of migration, uh, that, uh, you know, you'd go through any family tree and people in our country come from all over the world. Um, in terms of, of numbers, uh, you know, Mongolia is a relatively small country, and to be honest, the Mongolian migrants don't stand out in the way that maybe some other countries do. Uh, but the fact is, literally every country in the world um, is represented in our country. Some come for a short time for education, uh, for training, for other kinds of purposes, uh, but some indeed to become citizens and contribute to our country. What is that? this green card lottery or something that uh, people have not fully clear picture but yeah, it's happening? That's an interesting program, and basically the congressional intent, and this was established by Congress, is that countries that are relatively underrepresented I forget the exact number, but certain, not maybe 20,000, I'm not sure, but where there's a limited number of migrants every year, there's an additional way that people can be encouraged to come. And perhaps this is a good reflection of us as a nation of immigrants, but basically Mongolia is numbered among that, along with a number of other countries, and it truly is a lottery. You express your interest, and it's almost by chance that uh, someone is, is selected. Um, since you brought it up, I might mention that uh, one of my last nights in Washington before coming out here last November, I met with a, uh, a single Mongolian mother and her son who had uh, won the visa lottery and had made what is a difficult decision, to be honest, but a momentous one, which was to uh, move uh, with her and her son to Arlington, Virginia. And she also told me that his son was, uh, was doing wrestling at his local school. Now, I don't know, but I'd like to think that one of these years there may be a wrestler in our national team uh, that actually, if you, if you push the family tree, uh, perhaps the parents or grandparents came from a place like Mongolia. Um, but this was uh, an example, again, that, that visa lottery um, is, 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 is open to Mongolia. It's advertised every year. And I don't know the numbers specifically from Mongolia, but a few Mongolians every year, uh, that is their avenue in which they might be able to immigrate to the U.S. And plus this is a choice, whether if they are lucky to get it or it, to it go is. or not. It, it is. Choice, it's, right? it's, it's a choice. I will say that this particular single mother I'm talking about, I had uh, tremendous admiration for her because it's a tough decision uh, to leave your family. I think in some ways, uh, you know, she was thinking her son would get opportunities in terms of education, and she did it. And it involves a lot of hard work and sacrifice, uh, but as far as I could tell, was uh, a successful transition that they were making. Uh, let's talk a bit about uh, economic relations of two countries. Of course, because it's uh, not a official, very official, or at the ministry's levels dialogue, I would like to 
listen to your opinion, your possible critical opinion, what we can do in order to improve this economic relations in the sense that more private companies come. Because I know for the last, what, 23 years you have uh, granted almost $200 million to Mongolia. Granted means not to be paid. And plus, again, this Millennium uh, Challenge account, another $280 million is to come. You have five areas specified. Mm -hmm. How are those things go? Right. It may, maybe a couple things. I mean, I think on the aid front, you've you've we've highlighted the the, the the two bigger aid efforts we've had. Certainly, the USAID over over a twenty-year period and MCA over a, a more concentrated five-year period. We've had some assistance through our U.S. Department of Agriculture as well. Um, but I think the important thing is that eventually relationships have to move beyond the development ones to those commercial ones that you talked about, which does require uh, private sector, certainly a vibrant Mongolian private sector. Uh, but also high quality international companies as well. And that's where you do get into the discussion over what the um, uh, you know, business environment is like, what the investment environment is like. Um, I've told people, and maybe I'll say it here as well, that uh, before coming I read an interesting article by a, an American academic called Paul Collier called The uh, Challenge of Resource-Rich Economies. And I think that that's the challenge that Mongolia faces. Some of the things he highlighted were certainly the importance of good governance, uh, and beyond that, checks and balances, uh, transparency, um, you know, issues about corruption. Those are all things that lessons learned from around the world for countries that have had relatively small populations but large mineral resources. Um, there's examples out there that can be highlighted. And um, you know, those are a couple of ones. I think, again, this is an author that's never been to Mongolia, but in terms of the larger issues over what is required when a, when a, Mongo when a uh, economy such as Mongolia's has opportunities, um, there's also some big time challenges there, and it's important to think about the challenges too. So there are five areas you have selected for this Millennium Challenge account, right? Infrastructure. Right. right. The Millennium Challenge planning. specifically, that's a, a very good point. I think that strategically, even in a broader sense, beyond the, um, the MCC program, there are important um, things that are highlighted there. One is infrastructure, which I think people would agree is, is really important. A second area of interest is health. Um, a third area of interest is technical training. Um, and again, I think as you think about the future, um, Mongolia, um, three million, two and a half, three million people is not huge, but it's not small either. If people had the right skills to be matched with the um, economic demands for the future, there are certainly opportunities, and, and that's what it's also well, one well, of the things it looks what at. What is the concept behind will you bring American standard in technical terms in these whole areas? Or what is it? I mean, well, M or MCC, management or yeah, MC. It's 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 different things. I mean, I I would say that um, the USAID program, with the twenty year program, is is perhaps more about long term development, capacity building. The MCA is of shorter duration, but it recognizes that a country is making um, good decisions in terms of investments in people and stuff like that. So, you know, the the the, um, the infrastructure project actually is going to be a road. It's one hundred seventy five kilometers from Chor to. Um, Sunshine, which you have started already, which we had officially the, the groundbreaking quite recently, um, and it's it, I would say it's even historic because as I understand it, it's the last unpaved road between uh, between Europe and, and China, if you will. Exactly. So it'll be. Uh, it is of uh, strategic importance uh, for us. Well, I think I, I think commercially and, and and just for the country to have that north south route, I think is is is, is important. Um, I also say that uh, MCC brings in uh, talent from everywhere all over the world. So I know that um, uh, you know, the health program does involve some uh, technical assistance and what we call capacity building, which is essentially training. Um, uh, you know, so there's different parts of that. There's also, I, I didn't mention the energy and the uh, clean, well, there's a windmill kind of thing. And you want to cultivate those kinds of relationships. There's also something uh, related to, uh, to land titling. Uh, which I think is also uh, an issue. I mean, I think in the Gare districts and beyond that, in the um, peri-urban areas, the you know the ability to uh, you know be able to claim the rewards of the land that you've worked. If you've built a little hasha there, if you built a house, I think those are some of the kinds of issues that are being talked about. And again, those are ones that are some of them are hard issues, but I think that uh, you know they're important for the uh, for the future. Um, but 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 yes, I think. Um, uh, you know, health in particular, as I mentioned, I think does involve some of that training that you talked about in terms of improving skills. Well, just um, from the perspective that 